After weeks of delays in bringing you bag number two from the 1945 handbag booklet, it's finally complete. As I'll share with you in the video, there were issues in constructing this bag, beginning with the omission of pattern pieces, then clear explanations and construction. At first I thought it was something I wasn't grasping, but the pattern at some points was confusing and even wrong. There's an assumption patterns, instruction manuals, sewing books, and the like from the past are 100% correct when these things can be just as flawed as those today. On bag number two, I'm going to be working on the back and flap section of the handbag. And um, the boxes that I needed to make this pattern are going to be seven down and 18 across. And let me move my jelly beans out of the way here. And since this is an 18 inch ruler, this is going to make it very easy to um, make the uh, 18 boxes that I'm going to need across. So I'm going to draw a line here across. The boxes are one inch over and one inch down. So here I've got one inch there. Here's another inch. There's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, and there's the eighteenth one. Okay? And of course I'm going to need this line to go over just a little bit over to meet that eighteen inch mark there. Now um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to draw down to make the seven boxes down and again this is for an inch down so here's one, two, three, four, five, six and then there's seven. So I've got my seven boxes or seven marks down for my boxes and so it's just a matter of marking everything in now and then we're going to bring down the next line and so we're just following the marks I made Keep going until we get all of our boxes made. Mark it up. And this is really good if you have some music or something that you can listen to while you're doing this. And, and now we're down to the 18 inch mark. Boxes across. And that's, that came up pretty nice there. And we'll keep going. Mark that in. Okay. So now we've got all of our, so all of our uh, for the uh, wall and handle of the section, I'm going to have four boxes down and 24 across. For the button, I will have four down, four across. And then for the flap facing section, uh, which is here, I will have six down and nine, excuse me, it'll be six down, nine across. And then for the handle facing section, which is here, that will be two down, 10 across. And then for the last section, which is for the front section and lining section, that will be seven down, 10 across. Here's a close up of the pattern. I'm truing the lines on the pattern pieces. Off camera, I added all the necessary information that was needed for each one of the pattern pieces, which would be the fabric interfacing and lining. And then uh, there was an additional piece that was not in the illustrations, but in the instructions, and that was this uh, five by six pocket lining. So I went ahead and uh, marked that up right quick. But the other thing I'd like to point out too is that um, this pattern has already um, was already constructed with the seam allowance in it. 
off camera I cut the pieces for the handbag out and uh, what I had to do in the uh, as part of the instructions was to separate the interfacing pieces from the fabric pieces and each one of those pieces will have to be um, top stitched um, going lengthwise and crosswise uh, there was also another piece that was not a part of the illustrations but I found in the instructions and at first I wasn't quite sure what it was uh, telling me because it was kind of sketchy but I finally figured it out about after five minutes but I had to add um, this interfacing uh, strips which uh, are four strips and they will go across the back and uh, flap part of the um, handbag and then I also had to add a couple of X's here for uh, that interfacing part and that uh, will be attached to the fabric part uh, I decided after being absolutely bored out of my mind top stitching the interfacing for the um, for cross stitches and uh, lengthwise stitches that I'm going to use muslin and um, I did not have any heavy-duty interfacing here at home so I decided to um, use a fusible interfacing and that did not work so given that I have to do all this top stitching lengthwise and crosswise um, why not do it on muslin and muslin will be far sturdier and will act I'm sewing the lining, then we'll move on to the handles. This is what the handbag looks like after I did the crosswise and the lengthwise stitch on it and it came out very nicely. Um, also I did the same here on the front facing and on the wall and um, handle section of the handbag. And you can't see it on the camera I'm sure uh, very well but uh, it is uh, done in white thread and I started uh, doing this with uh, navy thread and ran out of thread so I just went ahead and finished this off with white thread. So. Um, so it is crossed stitched and lengthwise stitched. Uh, the other thing I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to go back and I'm going to have to redo uh, this part of the flap on the handbag uh, because I miscalculated somehow it was a little lower here and I was unable to turn it. So I'm going to have to take this out here and then restitch it and um, go to the next step. Um, also 
um, the uh, handles here will be turned out and um, this is one of the nicest uh, features on the handbag and that's a little different than what I've ever done um, also I've already put one of the pockets on the lining and of course the lining came out nicely as well and so far I'm, I'm pretty pleased with it um, I had um, ran into some problems in the beginning in terms of the instructions and everything as I pointed out earlier but all in all it came out very nice um, the other thing too I wanted to point out um, earlier I talked about the four uh, pieces of um, interfacing that I had to cut out uh, turned out I only needed to use two pieces and this was um, meant to reinforce the uh, middle of the flap section on the handbag so over time it would be opened and closed and that kind of thing so this is just giving it some extra reinforcement so that's where those those two pieces uh, ended up Um, I figured out what happened on the handbag. It was much too long here on the flap section, which was why it was not fitting down here into the wall section of the uh, handbag. So um, I um, did not have to go back in and do any more ripping um, out of the flap. So I went back and I sewed that back down and uh, reinforced it. So everything's fine there. But uh, what I did was I um, did a hand based along the edge here and uh, to just try to figure out what was going on and turned out that it was uneven and something must have happened in the beginning of the calculations I can't uh, I don't know if that was in the cutting or the calculations itself I'm not quite sure what happened but it ended up that the uh, flap section here was much too long it was kind of slanted a little bit this direction so I ended up going in and kind of following along what was going on with it I hand basted it and then I went back and I machine stitched it along the edge here and then uh, I pinked it and then I just decided to go ahead and serge it um, because that's what uh, I did with the entire bag so now it's everything's even and now it's just a matter of um, going ahead and connecting the lining to the handbag and turning the bag inside out and then I wanted to point out too is that um, this pattern um, is not a hard pattern to do um, but um, halfway through um, it just is all over the place in terms of uh, giving you uh, the next steps on what to do and uh, so for a beginner sewer this would be difficult um, for an experienced sewer yes I was confused in some places and after uh, so uh, long I decided to just scratch what the instructions said and to do what I know to do in the completion of the handbag I attached the button onto the front flap and uh, I literally did a cross stitch and uh, so you can see where I've uh, stitched down and I reinforced it here and I did the same crossways so uh, the button is attached to the flap um, it's optional whether you want to put a snap on it or not and I decided not to so uh, it would be fine that way uh, the other thing uh, in the completion of the handbag was to uh, take one flap and to uh, 
attach it to the other and I did that so I, I did a cross waist stitch here and I reinforced it so now uh, the flap is uh, attached to the other and so the bag is complete and uh, ready for use. Here's a final look at the handbag. Thanks so much for watching. God bless. Stay strong and be healthy.